Hey y'all, what's up? Big Wooly here, and welcome back to another episode of our FTB Skies Expert Let's Play. As you can tell, I'm wearing my armor, but it is not shiny. We need to make our armor shiny, so today we're going to get into some apotheosis enchanting. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I've gotten a little bit of a head start for our enchanting setup and set up 15 regular bookshelves to get us our base, you know, 15 Eterno, which makes level 30 enchants. Then for Apotheosis, in order for our next progression to be made, we're going to need to make a few seashelves and a few hell shelves. Now I'm referencing a guide that was made for all the mods nine on how to go through Apotheosis. And I'm just substituting some of the blocks that are in this one instead of the ones that were in the other one, which in this case means we got to use a lot more regular bookshelves to get our levels where they need to be, but we will make it through it nonetheless. So for the first tier to be able to infuse both our sea shelves and our hell shelves, which we're going to need to make a bunch of to get through things later on to get all the way to level 100 enchanting, we're going to need to make potion of regen and just some plain water bottles. So water bottles are no big deal. Potion of regen, on the other hand, we do need to do some potion brewing. I don't think we have a brewing stand out. So let's just get ourselves one. I'm sure we've got one in storage from looting villages. We're going to grab ourselves out some blaze powder. We're going to grab some bottles. It probably wouldn't hurt to just tell the system, can you make like 2,000 of them? Because the bees go through them in a hurry and, you know, doesn't hurt to have them. Now we just need some water buckets to make ourselves. Oh, I figured out this. This is cool. I did not know this. So if you don't have water buckets and you want to take one out, somehow with a pot with with a AE2, I can just left click it and it gives me a bucket of water. Didn't know that. I don't know where that's coming from or what's doing that or if that's like a new apotheosis thing I didn't know about or not apotheosis AE2 thing I didn't know about. Not real sure, but Kind of cool, if you ask me. All right, we need an infinite water source to be able to fill all of our bottles right here by our brewing stand. So we're just going to go real basic, two by two. There we go. Now we can fill our water buckets back up, toss them back in storage, grab out our bottles. Now we need three of them for our seashelves, which the only thing left we have for seashelves is we're going to need to make some prismarine bricks which we should have. We need 18. There we go. So now we should be able to craft up all three of the seashelves we're going to need for this first tier. So let's toss that in there and that in there. There we go. These just need to get added to the setup three. There we go. So that's going to put us at whatever that puts us at. I just know that based on this guide, these are the numbers we need to get to. So now we need to brew some potions. We need potions of regen. So to start, we're gonna need nether wart to make it an awkward potion. And then we're going to need gas tier to make our potions of regen. So in goes the nether wart, I'm impatient. And in goes the gas tier. Now that gets us the potions of regen that we need to make our infused hell shelves. For hell shelves, we just need nether brick. <laughs> You've got nether act by this point, smelt it down. Make your nether brick. Toss the potions in our inventory. There we go. Now we have three non-infused hell shelves, and this should get us to the numbers we're looking for for enchanting, or not enchanting, infusing our hell shelves and sea shelves. Now, the total number of those we need somewhere down in here, I cannot remember. I think it's probably best if we do like six of each. We may need more, but honestly, I don't I don't remember the total number. So I'm gonna make six more hell shelves and six more sea shelves, and I'm gonna infuse them all up in this enchanting setup. So give me just a second. All right, so I got our six more sea shelves and six more hell shelves. If this is right, we should be able to infuse them requires level 45 looks like it's right uh, let me go get some levels i think they're at the old base still we should have all kinds of levels in here levels for days oh yeah let's just uh 
It's kind of wasteful to do it this way, but let's just take out a couple hundred levels so we don't have to keep popping back and forth. Over here into storage. Back over to our enchanting table. Put our bookshelves in. Now all we need is lapis. There we go. Lapis in. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we don't use these directly, I don't think, in any case for either the hell shelf or the sea shelf, the infused ones. These are just for crafting the higher tier shelves, uh, blazings, and all of that. There's all different kinds of shelves with apotheosis, and this is what we need. So for the next setup, we still need our 15 base tier. Now, we also really, really need a silk touch pick. Actually, these don't matter. It'll come to the point when we're breaking the regular shelves that it's gonna get painful because we don't, we still don't have a silk touch work pick. How I've ended up here, I don't know. So there we have it. Let's take all of these out of the way and now let's see. So for the next one, we still need the 30 base tier, so the 15 regular shelves. Uh, and then we need three blazing hell shelves and three infused seashelves. So look at there, we do use them as infused. Let's toss these on. So there's our three infused seashelves and we need three blazing hell shelves. For those of you wondering, I will toss a link to this guide. Like I said, you have to adapt a little. The main thing you have to adapt is that All the Mods 9 has the traveler's backpacks in there and there is a book bag one of those that basically counts as five bookshelves. It gives you five Eterna, right? Yeah, the green one gives you five Eterna per backpack when you sit them down and you can sit them down on the ground and it gives you that for your apotheosis setup. It makes this a whole lot cleaner, but either way, we're gonna use this guide because it's the best guide I've ever seen and I didn't write it and don't wanna take credit for it because the person that took the time to do it, they deserve the credit. So where are we? We need blazing hell shelves. Let's look up how to make those. Looks like nothing too crazy. Stuff we've made before. So blazing hell shelves. What are we missing? Fire charges. We're gonna need nine of them. Let's go ahead and tell it to make them. Fire charge. Can you give me 10? Cool. So now blazing hell shelves. And then if we toss those in, we should be able to take out our three. And then we need these three. One, two, three. Still two skeleton skulls, but now instead of four, we need 28. So that's four, one, two, three, four. That's five total that gets us those. How are we going to do this? Where can they go? Can they go on top up there? I think that's too far away, but we'll try one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So now we should be able to, this setup will be used to infuse deep shelves that can be crafted into skulk shelves. Okay, so we need deep shelves. Infused hell shelf, oh my gosh. Reaper runes, are you serious? Polished moonstone. All right, let's take some moonstone and cut it. Sounds good. Let's go to our upstairs. All right, what, how is there not, <laughs> how is there not, Oh, stone cutter. Put this in, polished moonstone. Give me a whole stack, because I don't know how much I need. And then our dormant skulk shelves. De dormant, deep shelves. We need these runes for each one. Uh, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, let's make like, looks like 10 should be enough. So let's make 12 for good measure. Okay, now we need, well, we, we don't have enough infused hell shelves. Shoot, can I still infuse hell shelves on this setup? Maybe on a lower tier? Nope, looks like too much here. Dang it, we're gonna need more. So we have to unfortunately take all of this out and then we need to put back our three hell shelves. And then now we need to make a bunch more hell shelves. We're gonna go super fast. Are we ready? One, two. One, two. Yes, there's a block that'll make potions for me, y'all. I know about it, but I'm trying to be lazy, you know, and laziness always pays off. Why do today what you can put off until tomorrow? Right, right, cool. Glad we all agree. Okay, now I've run out of regular bookshelves. So spruce bookshelf. 
because that's the wood I have. Oh, we're out of planks already? Okay. Planks. Craft me a thousand. All right, how many do we need? I'll be right back once I have all the bookshelves. Oopsie. So I unpaused, uh, or I paused there for a second and forgot to unpause before I did the dormant shelves. The dormant shelves were just those runes we crafted, which you saw with the infused hell shelves. And then we put them in the smithing table upstairs because that's how you craft them. Now we get to see if these are going to work. I think they're too far away. So I think we may have to like go try and tuck them in the corners or something. I'm not real sure, but we'll see. So it looks like we do not have the right level for infusing them. Nope. So these are not counting and we have to figure out how to get them to count so that we can get our table set up right to infuse our shelves. So give me a second to try and figure that out. Okay, y'all, so color me a little bit confused. Uh, maybe you guys can help me in the comments or maybe I'll figure it out while I move on with today's episode. But if we look at uses for the dormant shelf here, you'll see that it needs three levels to go from a dormant deep shelf to a deep shelf. This requires at least 30 or Turner, at least 40 Quanta and at least 40 Arcana or Arcana or, you know, tomato, tomato, Nevada, Nevada, Nevada. I don't know. It's a thing. Go there and say Nevada and they will correct you. I'm like, I'm from the South. That's just how we talk. Nope. They weren't okay with it. Anyways. So if we take it and stick it in here, that enchant should say infusion. I'm going to test one with you guys on camera to make sure it doesn't perform, but it said infusion on all the other ones. Okay. It works even though it doesn't say infusion. Cool. All right. So now we move along and we get as many of these done as we need. We needed 10. I didn't want to test it off camera and then not have enough bookshelves. So thanks for suffering that with me. I'm just going to make the two extra because they're here. So now we have 10 infused deep shelves. So the problem we're going to have is these deep shelves are what get turned into, I do believe, our end shelves uh, with an ender core. But what we're really chasing is the draconic. We need one of those for our final level 100 tier. And the draconic is going to require a dragon head which I don't think we have or a way to get one. Let's just make sure. Yeah, until we go kill the dragon. Uh, we somehow have dragon sinew from something. Yeah, basically we have no way of getting one. So that will prevent us from having like an efficient level 100 setup. It doesn't mean we can't get there. It just means that this guide for those purposes isn't going to work for us. The main reason I wanted to get into some higher level enchanting though, which I don't necessarily need it to be max level right now, is I want to toughen up for our Gaia fight. We need the Gaia uh, spirit thing. We're going to have to kill the Gaia actually enough for a data model, it looks like, uh, to make our lives easy because we need a lot of these Gaia spirit, which come from killing Gaia. And then we can craft them in a loot fabricator, which means we're going to have to do the Gaia battle six times, I think, is what it takes to get a basic data model. And then we'll be able to get our Gaia spirit we need for our Gaia ingots from the data model going forward. So the goal is to just make sure that we can have an easy time and not be like running back to our body over and over and over while we're fighting the Gaia. So why don't we pause here and I'm going to look at, you know, what I can do to get us the best setup I can with what we have based on where we go progression wise from here because I don't want to make a bunch of stuff that's going to be useless and I don't want to lead you guys astray. So this is where I'm going to vary from the guide, but I will definitely still link this guide. It's a great thing to let you know. I mean, it doesn't spell out like why you're doing each of the steps uh, as far as like your levels of Eterna and Arcana and whatever else, but it does tell you what you need. So I will link it in the description below, but give me a minute to take a look and see what I can come up with. Okay, y'all. So I've looked at where this guide was taking us and we just can't get there, but I do think we might be able to get to a max table another way with what we have access to. So I'm going to vary from the guide right here, but hopefully that link will help you out, or maybe my video will help you out if you're struggling. 
I don't want to promise or even say that I'll have time to put a materials list together and like do it, but maybe if there's enough people wanting it, I'll do an apotheosis guide for this mod pack as like a separate tips and tricks video and just focus on it. I might pop over into like creative and just roadmap it out for like, you know, where you can do it in the game. Let me know if you want to see that in the comments below. So the infused hell shelf setup, I'm going the wrong way looking for it. So we're going to need to get to basically, we want to get to the maximum tier we can of all of these and we want all the clues we can get so we know what we're going to get on enchanting. So one of the next things we need to do are these shelves of Sight and Masterful Sight. Now they take infused hell shelves, they take some ender cores, uh, they take a spyglass, they take potions of night vision. So the reason that I wanted to go over this part with you is I was like brewing this stuff by hand earlier and that got old real quick. So I went looking at what options we have and I noticed that we have the potion brewer. Where did I stick it? Oh, it's not here. <laughs> I stuck it out here because we might be able to just automate this thing once I kind of figure out how it works. But so we feed it water, we give it glass bottles and blaze powder, and then it's gonna brew your potion in the order of the ingredients. So if there's nothing in there right now, it's making water bottles. So it's, it's got you your water bottles ready to go. So for these shelves, we need night vision. So let's bookmark that. So for night vision, we need an awkward potion, which is nether wart with golden carrots. So how many of these are we gonna need? One each for the first tier craft. So, and we need two of the shelf of masterful sight, I think for the most allow, most clues we're allowed to get, which is four. And we need extended editions for the second tier. So we need the regular ones for the first tier, the extended edition for the second tier, but we still only really need one uh, or two of these shelves and two of those shelves. So we need two of these and four of the other. All right, so golden carrots, and then to make them longer, we're gonna need redstone. So golden carrots, I swear I made an auto craft for them. Make a thousand. Oh, there's not that many carrots. Uh, we should do something about that. What about a hundred? Cool. All right, we need to get carrots going. So now, if we put it in in the right order, we put your nether wart first, it'll brew it, and then if there's no other ingredient, it's just gonna sit here. But if we give it another one, now it's gonna make our potion of night vision. Now if you clear these, it's gonna start over, which is what we want. And then all we need for the next ones is redstone, and we're gonna need to make two sets of these because we need four total based on the math we just figured out. So, but I say we need two sets and I get one redstone out. I may not be a smart man. There we go. So that's three minute night vision at our redstone to amplify. There's our eight minute night vision and we will let it go through and brew it a second time. Now we're going to need two spy glasses, which should just be some copper and some amethyst, which we've got in abundance. So there's two spy glasses. Now shelf of mass, shelf of sight, shelf of sight. Awesome. Shelf of Masterful Sight, we should be able to do our first one. Oh, we're missing emerald blocks, really? I guess they need to get moved into a compacting drawer. So there we go, Shelf of Masterful Sight, and then we're gonna need this second round of potions, but let's take out the ingredients so we don't make extra, and then it's just gonna be waiting on us to use water bottles. So now for the second one, there we go. So that gets us our enchanting clues. I think we can only use two. If we can use more, we'll make more, but at least you know how in your worlds. So for the next thing, I think how we're going to get there is the end shelves that we can make. So at this point, we have a crafting recipe for end rods and they can be made with the proto chorus. So these here, end rods, can be used to make the pearlescent end shelves which will give us a max of 45 quanta, our Eterna, seven and a half quanta and seven and a half arcana each. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our end shelves. So we need to take the deep shelves we made earlier and to get the max uh, Eterna we can from those, we're gonna need nine. So we're gonna go ahead and go and do nine of these, Aww. which I thought I had the ender cores for uh, in my inventory, but I have somehow used two of them. 
So let's make two more, but we can get started. Go ahead and do these. There we go, end shelves. Now we're just waiting on our two ender cores to come back for our other two. But these we can go ahead and craft into the pearlescent end shelves. We are two end rod shorts, but as I said, we have a crafting recipe that we can do with our proto chorus right there. I quit saying, there we go, big woolly. Stop it. So there's our nine. We're gonna hang on to the rest of these in case there's other things we end up needing to make. And we're just gonna stick you here in the middle and get our pearlescent end shelves. Okay, so now let's go destroy the whole setup and see where all of these put us. Oh, in between clips, I made a silk touch ax just for those of you who were concerned. All right, three across the back, three across the side, and three across this side. Where does that put me? 45 out of 50 Eterna. So we only got a little bit more Eterna to get. We really don't need a whole heck of a lot of Quanta. Uh, we could take these skeleton skulls off. And if we were to put some Wither Skelly skulls down, that would be even more helpful. So let's grab those out because these are 10 Quanta a piece. So if we stick like a Wither Skeleton skull there, that gets us to 92. There we go. So now we're at 100. So we have 100 Quanta. Let's work on getting that Arcana up and the Arcana we can get from where? So Arcana, we get five a piece from the deep shelves. Yeah, we get seven from these pearlescent end shelves, but the deep shelves also give us some Eterna. So let's toss these in and that gets us to 82, not quite max level. We need more Eterna and then we need whatever. I think our Draconic is what allows us to get to max 50 so that's why we're not going to be able to get to max level till we get there because i don't think there's anything else i don't think there's another shelf that gets us max 50. this is the best we're probably going to be able to do prior to that now what is the recidification where is that one all right so what do we get for those that one's negative that one's positive Ooh, positive 10 shelf of Positive 15, we can't make the end one yet, but we might be able to make that one. Oh, hello B, you didn't drop anything I wanted, but we'll pick them up anyways. Oh no, don't despawn. So for getting us as close as we can without that shelf, we want the re re recidification or whatever. It lessens the negative effects that we get from our quanta. So we want to build that up as high as possible so that we don't get a bunch of junk uh, bad for us in chance. So gilded blackstone, I think we can do or have. And then, so what are you honey blocks? We got that. No problem. Got blocks of amethyst. No problem. So now we just need some infused seashells, which conveniently we have like six of. So let's, uh, let's start right there and see where we get to. Okay. Uh, we're going to need blocks of amethyst. Just give me a whole stack of it. Why don't we do four of these? And then we can go here and do four of those. And that gets us, yeah, we would need four of the thing to get 100% resetification or whatever. Re, re, yeah, I don't know, man. Words and me don't get along. But this should be enough to make our enchants pretty tolerable. So let's go here and let's see what we get. So for our head, ooh, wow. I don't know what gloom is, but I mean, I'm not too keen on fire protection. Doesn't help me with the dragon projectile protection, steady body block reach thorns. That's all cool. I'm really looking for like regular protection. Did I not have enough inventory space for my boots? Hold on. I need to get our boots going. All right. Come on. Something. Give me regular protection. No, that's not what we want. Uh, looks like that helmet one's probably going to be the best. Sure. Blast protection might not be the worst. Ooh, prot seven. There we go. Steady body prevents knockback. That could be extremely useful if it works for the dragon. We don't want life mending. Let's grab some books because we can definitely make the enchantment library too uh, later on. Not tonight. <laughs> we are all over time, I do believe, on this episode. Uh, potato recovery. <laughs> uh, are the tomes in here? Ah, oh, yeah. So tomes. If you're wanting to try and get the right enchants and it's not showing up on the gear you're trying to enchant, uh, you can take tome and make a tome of that particular gear slot and it will only roll 
the enchants for that slot. So like we instead, if we're not getting what we want on our actual chest, we can put in the book and it will enchant it like it's a chest plate until we get the one we really want. And you can check, it will roll the table each time for your actual chest plate. So you can check it on your regular chest plate. Ooh, Prot7, what is Berserker's Fury? I think that's actually good, even though it's red. Berserker, become enraged, twin taking damage. Yeah, so that's a good one. A uh, chance to apply negative status effects to enemy when hit. That's cool. Thorns, magnetic, magnet. Makes you magnetic for items and experience. Hey, we don't have a magnet, and I guess it, it's cool. I like it. So there we go. We got boots, hat. All we have left are legs. So there's a prop five. What do they want to give us on our regular legs? Blast protection? Nope. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. But magic protection could be all right. That would help with the dragon's... Uh, breath stuff that's magic so there we have it now we are fully 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 enchanted up the only thing is our sword might need to be scrapped teleportation is cool for the travel staff but for fighting we can definitely get higher sharpness off the table but what we could do since we kind of like all the enchants that are on there we could make up some of these tomes for the sword and if we can get a higher level sharpness or anything else that will go on there on a book, then we can just enchant it over the top. So we're just going to enchant up all these books and see if we get something better. All right, let's go look at what we've gotten. So, ooh, Knowledge of the Ages, Enemy Drops. I don't like that. I want my drops. Uh, capturing, that's cool, but we wouldn't want to put that book on as is. Uh, this is for... Armor, all right, let's uh, toss armor, fire aspect, sweeping edge. I don't know if I wanna set things on fire. Sweeping edge, scavenger, ooh, I like scavenger. Capturing, this could definitely be a good one to try, but it has fire aspect and no looting. So that's an armor one, that's an armor one. That's just efficiency. Ooh, looting seven, magnet seven. Oh, it's got life mending. Boo. It's got life mending. Boo. Looting four. Everlasting. Ooh, that there's the teleportation enchant back on there. But it's got smite instead of sharpness. Boo. Armor. 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 Okay, so these are not working for me yet. They're cool and all, but they're not working for me. If we had that library of Alexandria, though, that could be nice. All right, so I think you guys get the idea. I'm going to see if I can make us a better sword, and then I'll be right with you. All right, y'all, we can't make the Library of Alexandria yet, but we have everything we need for the enchantment library, and I've been hard at work over here trying to make this sword happen, but just not, not getting where I need to go. So the enchantment library was easy with everything we've been doing. It just takes infused hell shelves or any of the infused shelves, the hell shelves are really the cheapest, sort of. Actually, I guess the probably the sea shelves would be the cheapest because you don't have to brew potions. But either way, I had the potions needed for, or I had the hell shelves to infuse. So we're going to make the Library of Alexandria. What this does is we take all of our enchanted books, and I mean all of them. Everything we have in storage that is an enchantment book, we just take it and we dump them in here. Now, what the library does is allows you up to the level of the library to pull out those enchantments and basically like custom make your book for your stuff. So you don't have to just use random stuff. You, you can actually just custom build the book with what you have in your inventory or in your storage. So I'm going to make a bunch of inventory room here real quick. I am going to dump all of them that I have in my storage into my inventory and I'm gonna get them into the library. Okay, y'all, so I did a thing. I went ahead and made the enchantment extractor from Industrial Foregoing. It is another block, gonna show you real quick. I made it off camera. It will allow you to strip all the enchants off of an item and move them onto another one. I probably should have made a better sword, but I mean, I have used this sword for the entire time. And as you can see, 
There are so many enchants on there, you can't even actually see them all in that view. You can over here. So we got the best we can get of all of those to get us more loot, to do more damage, to hit more targets, to, yeah, like crazy chances of getting spawn eggs and the mob head and all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff. Now, our armor, all enchanted up, you know, good to go. We could probably do it better with the enchantment library, but if you've never seen this, what the enchantment library does is you can take anything that's enchantable, put it in here, and then, like, let's say you wanted to build one for a piece of armor, right? So if we have some protection, you'll see the maximum level available because that's the highest level that's been put into this library so far is seven, and you can hold down shift and left click and it will prepare you a book. But don't take the book out immediately because if you're trying to make armor or something of the sort, you can also like, so say you wanna add mending to it. You just click on it and now this book, if you pull it out, has protection seven and mending on it. So what I did is I just stripped everything I could find and dumped all the books I had in there and tried to make us the best sword possible. So I hope that editing woolly or editing fancy is able to get this down into a palatable episode. I was kind of all over the map when the guide ran out on the apotheosis stuff behind me. Uh, but I mean, I think we made it through to where we can, the best we can do until we get the dragon down. And this should definitely help with the Gaia fight. I mean, if you come look over here, we've got a hundred health, 68 above the base amount of health. Now, uh, 26 armor, We've got uh, the attack damage still kind of seems low, but we've got high attack speed. We've got good range. This doesn't show us our crit and everything else, but we've got all the stats stacking up for us. So I look forward to fighting the Gaia in the next episode with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button. And if you're not already, subscribe and ring that bell for notifications so you get notified of future episodes. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.